Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. Last episode we uh, did Seth, and this is episode 10 by the way. I messed up on you know, saying like it was 7 or 8, but this one is 10. Um, so I messed up on like 8 and 9. Um, but anyway, we're on um, West Turkerson. And he's right here. And um, off camera, I went and got me a new horse. Uh, I just basically roped it. Uh, broke it in and everything to make it mine and it seems like it's faster oh uh, mr marston how are you sir i'm all right i met up with your friend seth oh <laughs> seth of the dead <laughs> yes <laughs> interesting fellow <laughs> you don't meet many men these days with the moral fortitude to cut straight to the chase like that do you <laughs> thankfully not mr west dickens Yes, uh, contemporary society is remarkably harsh on professional exhumers. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, it was an art form valued more highly than literature? I believe Seth comes from that school of thought. <laughs> oh, very interesting. Look, you thought any more about our plan? Ah, <coughs> your plan, dear boy, your plan. I am merely the help, uh, not mercifully the arbiter of wisdom. What you are dear boy, is the man whose life I've saved twice now. A man who sells lies and deceit to unwitting people. A man who, if he doesn't help me, I won't think twice about putting a bullet through his skull, feeding the vultures myself. Now you see, Mr. Marston, you have the exterior of a violent man, but the soul of an angel, and that is what I think I cherish most about you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, but before we can attend to your particular problems, um, we need some extra lubricant to oil the machinery of business. And uh, this being America, <coughs> that lubricant with which we concern ourselves <coughs> is money. Money? <coughs> what are you talking about? Oh, we need weapons. Armor plate for the wagon, extra hands, and I need some danger money. So let's sell some more of these cures. Sell cures? Around here? Do you want to see me lynched? <laughs> no. The sport of kings. Racing, my friend. The sport of kings. A noble activity without reproach. Exactly the kind of activity where a lying, cheating, degenerate like myself can prosper. <laughs> Come, let's finish the loading and we'll discuss it as we drive. <laughs> now, sir, take that to reach. It's about time you drive. Besides me, I hate driving the wagon. Alright, I'm just going to uh, skip through this, I think. Seth is an interesting fellow, is he not? I wouldn't say.
of this cart for Mr. West Dickens. I'm done. I suggest we be a hasty retreat. I best people myself to the stage before somebody decides they want their money back. Bye bye, me. Wasn't that fantastic? The tears of the crowd, the thunder of the wheels, the falling rocks, the homicidal maniac. Oh, come on, John. Even a cold hearted misanthrope like you must have found that just the tiniest bit exhilarating. Nothing friendly in bunch, are they? They take the racing very seriously in these parts. In your participation was not entirely free of food. That was clear. Ah, sports, horror, and heartache. <laughs> the guilty pleasures of mankind since the dawn of time. I'd get away from the men we just swindled before you start waxing too lyrical. Yes, yes, of course. sir. Well done. Having you as a ringer has netted us a fine profit. <laughs> we seem to be wasting time, old man. Oh, patience, my friend. The Trojan horse cannot run before it can walk, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Next, we need to procure some grand and overwhelming firepower. And for that, you need to contact an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Irish. Irish? Yes. Uh, he's an interesting kind of fellow. and uh, He usually can be found in uh, Armadillo or some other town around here on some Bacchanalian revel or such. Uh, Great. An alcoholic arms dealer. What could be better? You've seen trouble, mister. Enough for a hundred men. Trouble has a way of finding me, mister. Do I like the sound of that? <laughs> Do I ever like the sound of that? Trouble with a capital T. That's just capital. And whatever you say. Cold, tough, but with a heart of gold. The cowboy sings his lonely song like, like a dog whose bone is made of wood. Excuse me? Nothing. I, I was just writing my next piece. I've been sent out here to provide a little frontier joie de vivre for the ladies back east. I don't understand a word you're saying, mister. Yeah, my mom felt the same way. And now she wrote me out of her will, and there's no hope for any of us. <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy Saint, sir, at your disposal. But uh, please don't dispose of me just yet. <laughs> All right, these are side missions. I'm just gonna skip through them. Um, every time I go and pick them off, I'm gonna skip through them and more adventure and because they're gonna be right here. Whoop. You know, so and then when they, when they go on the map, they're gonna be. Pretty much well on the bluish, yellow, uh, purplish. I'm thinking since I'm out of the building, I might be able to see it. No, but I can always go and do them off camera. One of West Street Dickerson again. Where is he in here? Oh, he's down here. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. Or what he's up to.
don't care about Come anything on. here, buddy. Mr. Marston, sir, John Marston. Mr. Marston, don't be so childish. Come on, sir, I implore you. Okay, 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 so I made a few innocent mistakes when last we met, but my plan is still sound. Together we can conquer, if not the world, and certainly Bill Williamson. But first, you need me to do you a favor? <laughs> You read my mind. I can only deduce you've been taking my tonic, sir, as instructed. It can give the most ordinary of intelligences a remarkable insight. I'll give you insight. I'll show you what your guts look like. Please, sir, this show of petulance is nothing short of embarrassing. Think for a moment, sir. Think. I'm thinking about how much of my time you're wasting. Um, sir. Sir. I am about to do something which I greatly discourage in all wise and rational men. A selfless act for you. But, sir, before I act selflessly, allow me to act selfishly and sell some of my wares. Fair enough. Oh, good, sir. Come, and let's go visit some of our fine friends in the other oil business we have here in Plainview. These men need all the help they can get. <laughs> I have a feeling he's getting me in trouble. They're there and he sees, they see me and him walking, yeah. They know I'm with him. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round, gather round. My friends, are you ready to change your lives forever? Friends, hardworking souls of uh, playing you, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic, or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article which cures headache, neuralgia, uh, toothache, earache, backache, right. clothes. This man is a fucking charlatan. He just got done swindling us down at Cho Springs with this song and dance. I say we tar and feather him right now. I say we I shoot the it. bastard. I think it's time to take a business elsewhere. Uh, I apologize.
the weight of plebeian ignorance, my boy. Keep your eye out, John. Maybe you need to fix out a change of career. I would never give up on science, John. Read Just run it off, Paul! How can these people harbor such bitterness? Well, I ain't surprised. That tonic I drank at Facebook went through me like a dose of salt. which a group of men can turn from passive sheep into murderous wolves. I'm impressed with how you nearly got us killed back there. Uh, yes, yeah, so perhaps we should shell the tonics business for a period. Let's say we try our hand at racing again. There's a meet at Rathskeller. You're trying my patience, Mr. West Dickens. Well, I'm sorry, dear boy, but I'm only an aging bender of exotic elixirs, not the bloody U.S. cavalry. Forgive me if matters take some time to prepare. Mr. West Dickens. Ah, Mr. Marston. How wonderful to see you, sir. How wonderful. Are we ready then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, nearly, sir. He's taking a lake and he shook his hand. Nearly, sir. I need some cash machine. to get some extra you hardware to fitted to my own Trojan horse here. What? Uh, never mind, sir. I can only presume that you have not enjoyed the benefits of a classical education, so I would not take umbrage if some of my illusions sail over your head, sir. I won't pretend to understand you, but I will endeavor to make you understand me. 
Either we do this right now, or I put a bullet in you and get on with my day. Please, I knew you were a violent man, Mr. Marston, but I did not think you were a stupid one. We need money to outfit my carriage, to turn a simple tradesman's vehicle into something more subterfuge. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you how we are going to gain said cash. Now I know that you ride very well. So come, sir, to Rathskeller Fork. <laughs> Let's go, my dear boy. I'll show you the way. Come on. So how are you, Cap? Okay, all things considered. Hopefully we can get through today without running into another army of your satisfied customers. Upwards and upwards. I refuse to let the blind stupidity of the proletariat derail my calling in life. Nothing blind about it. I'd say they saw right through you. Ah, before knowledge comes down, my dear boy. Everybody knows you're as crooked as a dog's hind leg, West Dickens. I resent that implication, John. I wasn't implying. I was telling you. If you're such a successful businessman, what are you doing living in a cave? Delightfully Dickensian, isn't it? If you say so. Are you familiar with the concept of philanthropy, John? I'm surprised you are. Oh, I don't do any of this for myself, John. I hope you realize that. You're crazy, old man. You seem to be forgetting that I've been part of your ridiculous charade. It's been quite a ride, John, hasn't it? We haven't gone that far. No, I mean us. Richwood Farm, Gap Tooth Creek, Plainview. We made quite a team, you and me. Brains and brawn. We should consider a more permanent partnership. This partnership ends as soon as I have Bill Williamson. I appreciate your help, but I've just about had it with all your schemes. You need to realize what's at stake here. I know, John, I know. Just win this race and we'll be ready. I give you my word. Almost ready. I gotta get there out of here. There is, John. Rap Pork. <laughs> Gentlemen, this will be a fair race. No shooting, stabbing, flip pushing, rock throwing, cactus branding, neck lassoing, setting fires, or other acts that cause the rider to barely lose his way or bleed heavily or black out. Get yourselves ready. Set. Go. Let's go. I need the horse pills. Get my horse extra like stamina. Come on! Let's go!
<laughs> what a fantastic spectacle, John. Let's take a moment to bask in the glory of our victory. Have we got enough money now? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yes, once Seth and Irish have furnished their side of the bargain, I think we should be ready. Quite a team we've assembled, don't you think? Right now, I... A bunko, a grave robber, and a drunk. How could things possibly go wrong? Okay. All I gotta do is Irish mission and be ready to do whatever we gotta do. Alright. Here's another side mission I'm just gonna go and pick up real quick. I can get that. I'll do that off camera. Any good at tossing horses? <laughs> Hey, partner, I need your help. Uh, see, this is how they usually do it right, right here on these missions. here mister I've come for you a mercy mission your poor wretch of a man lost his mind I've seen him at Rascal at Fort uh, my man my man's dead Long man shot him about a month ago shot him in the back coming out of a cat house gave some medals just like I gave myself to that poor bastard unless you've been to hell you ain't seen no man of mine then where is she who Jeb's girl. Who's Jeb? Creepy kind of guy. Short black hair. Mustache. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> this is Lucy. This is Jeb's girl. You dumb fool. Uh, Took it off him about a week ago. <laughs> then you better come with me. <laughs> yeah. We better get her back to her man, huh? You gonna made my day. What a fine romantic you is. <laughs> well, come on, man. All right, follow me. Come on.
on your face, mister. I bet you thought you was being a real hero. I should never have listened to that crazy fool. Mercy mission. Ha! So did Jeb offer you some kind of reward for this? No, miss. I was just helping him out. Well, ain't you the sweetest thing? I'm just like you. A real sweetheart. Jeb strike you as being kind of funny? Most people out here strike me as being kind of funny. But Jeb, he's a special type of funny, I'd say. I'm inclined to agree with you, miss. <laughs> She's good, mister. I'm glad you find it so amusing. So, uh, yeah. saved in a while so might as well save it got a lot done I think he's in Armadale. Yep. Guys. Oh boy, here we go. That barbet just stole my horse. Please, you've got to help me.
hey dude, I'm gonna kill you if you don't stop shooting at me. Same this guy's horse. Um, I'm gonna call it good here, and I'll see you in the next episode. Episode 11.